When you do a strength training exercise or when you lift weights, there's two general approaches. The first one is to focus on the movement, perfect the movement, feel the movement. The second one is to feel the muscle. Both of them have distinct advantages and disadvantages. Try them both in your training. Do you think Do you think we're helping people or hurting them by telling them that? I sometimes, think sometimes I feel like that's like very confusing. No, well, let's talk about it. That's why we have a, that's why we have a podcast. <laughs> just, <laughs> we don't just end it there, right? right? It yeah, a little bit further. Well, yeah. okay. So, uh, so a good example of movement uh, focused strength training would be like a power lifter. Right? Power lifter doesn't care about feeling the chest in a bench press or the quads in a squat. They're trying to maximize the biomechanics, trying to maximize the movement, lift as much weight as possible mm -hmm. in the safest way possible. Bodybuilders are an example of the other option. Um, bodybuilders could care less about how much weight is on the bar. When they do a bench press, they want to feel the pecs, um, you know, squeezing and contracting, getting a pump. When they do squats, they want to feel it in their target muscles, right? Both of them have yeah. advantages. Uh, one of them teaches you how to really fire the central nervous system. And if you're, especially if you've only been lifting for a few years, that's the way you activate the most muscle fibers. The other way is advent advantageous as well because it teaches you how to sculpt the body, shape the body, identify weak areas. And it's also less uh, risk of injury when you yeah. work out that way. Totally competing goals though, or yes. competing mindsets, I should say. Yeah, it's interesting to think about that because, um, I mean, it, as you're doing, like if you're just movement focused with that too, it's like you're, you're, you're still confined to like perfecting that whole process. Mm -hmm. Like I want to, I want to be loose enough. I want to, I want to add as much force as possible in the right optimal time and then be able to relax my body and, and end up in a position that I'm seeking out. And so it's like a, it, to have like, you feel your muscles in that process would slow you down. It would kind of interrupt that whole flow. It's like a very like fluid mindset versus like the other is very much like let's hyper focus on every little thing, every little nuance that's happening mm -hmm. contraction wise with the muscles. Can I, can I feel this a little bit more intensively? Like bodybuilders do a really good job of making lightweight seem heavy. Yeah. I think I, that's a big thing. I feel like if you've been lucky enough to have the opportunity to work out with a power, a true power lift someone who's been powerlifting most of their lifting career, right? Uh, and then a, a true bodybuilder, someone who's been training like a bodybuilder for most of their career. It's so obvious. So different. I mean, if, if, if you've got somebody who maybe intertwines, go back and forth or, you know, lifts one way for a while, then changes is one thing. But if you like you ran the exact same workout, same exercises and you worked out with a power lifter, and then you ran that back next week and you ran that with a bodybuilder, the experience of that workout would feel so different. Mm -hmm. You say it was, I, and you know, it's funny that, uh, this conversation is something that, that actually draws me back to Justin and I's when we first met, because I don't really work out with a lot of people like that. I've, I've talked about that so many times on the show. Like I'm the guy who doesn't like workout partners and, and never been a fan of that. You like that white snake song. <laughs> <laughs> Which one is that? Here Sing we go. Again on my own. <laughs> who's a? Hey, who's the chick that's dancing on the car in that one? Was oh, like Tori. No, no, Tori what? something. No, that's someone else. Did yes, that? Right, did that? Did, yes. okay, did that video make her famous, or was she famous? That and video that, made her famous. So the video made her famous. I, I'm almost was positive. she dating the lead singer, or was that just like a random like the their uh, producer or whoever? No like, idea. Sought her out. No okay. idea. I yeah. so picture Such like Doug and like a high school though. dance to that song. That's you. Is that your high school, Doug? When you were. Is that close? How close am I? I don't know what year that is. Uh, Ta oh, Tawny Katane. Oh, Tawny. Tawny. That can't be a real was, name. Close. 1989. Close. Where yeah. are you at? Where Every, are you at? Everybody's got to watch. 1989, I was, uh, I was, I graduated by university by then. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it was still, you were still, it was still yeah. relevant. Yeah. Right? Well, no, he graduated, so it hadn't even come out. Oh, the so he was, he was dancing no, I'm, something I'm, I was even old older. Yeah. Wow, I was trying to, I was trying to hook you up there. <laughs> yes. I was trying to hook you up for a couple of years there. I was uh, dancing the Count Basie band. <laughs> the who? Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. All right, all right. Take it back. Take it back to what you were saying. But so Justin was one of the few people that I, I probably went through a stint that I lifted with pretty consistently. And it was always interesting to watch how different we did every ex exercise. Yeah. You were bodybuilder folks. Yeah, oh, I, yeah. Yeah. I was totally bodybuilder. And, yeah. and I would, I would even categorize me as like the extreme version of that. In fact, I remember getting introduced to training that way. And I used to, I used to like the point that Justin made right there. I was like, I used to like to use the lightest weight, yeah. but make it heavy. Right. And because I cared just about the way I looked, 
that was like the thing. It was like I loved pulling up next to a powerlifter guy who's Whoa, moving all his weight, grunting yeah. and slamming and making big noise. And then I'd come over with my little itty bitty weight, but then I would be jacked, yeah. you know, all well, shredded. So you used to get excited when uh, I mean you'd bury me in some of these like hypertrophy yeah. workouts. Yeah. <laughs> so you feel like okay, now we're gonna super. That was my hack. Right? I never super said anything before that. You know, it was just <laughs> all just like hundred percent like max effort, yeah. like with with each lift. You remember but, that? Remember that workout we had with uh, Ben Pikulski at his gym? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he took all three of us through a workout. I've never, I think that's kept, the most so awkward. awkward I think that's the most awkward I've ever seen Justin. He kept correcting Justin's form. Uh, yeah, because like, Justin's not a bodybuilder. I was like, I'm pretty sure we're gonna get in a fight if this keeps going. He this kept way. going over. He's like, like no, grab my arms here. and like <laughs> moving them. Yeah. It's like, oh god, yeah. you, you gotta feel it right here. Feel yeah. this area. Justin's like, oh god, this is terrible. But I mean, this it's this is important to understand about strength because they both have so much value. Like, if you look at the studies on activating muscle fibers, okay. You will activate more muscle fibers if you fire the whole body. And that's what movement-based training um, tends to do, right? So when you bench press like a power lifter, what do they focus on? Leg drive, activating the lats, like all these muscles in order to, to generate this neural drive that helps you lift the most weight. Bodybuilders are like, flare your elbows out, feel your pecs squeezing at the top, feel the stretch you know, at the bottom type of deal. Now, as you become more advanced you can activate more muscle fibers without having to fire the whole central nervous system. So, so when you see these like really advanced lifters and they can really turn on a muscle without activating too many of the other muscles, that's a skill that's developed. But they're both valuable. Like I like when yeah. you switch to powerlifting style training, you probably saw new muscle growth. Yeah, yeah. You know, and Justin, probably when you went to hypertrophy. Oh, 100%. Yeah, yeah, so it's like these two these two paths are not, it's not like you have to stay in one or the other. You, you should focus on both of them. And, and I would even make the argument that powerlifters would would gain value from doing some hypertrophy. In fact, I don't need to make hundred percent. They know that now. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. I, you know, I, the part that the original point I made about are, you know, are we just confusing people more? I do think that this sheds a little bit of light on sometimes when you see these different uh, pieces of content that go viral, that also as a consumer becoming aware of who's presenting that information, yeah. right? Like there's like there's been many times where like you know our our good friend Jordan Shallow will put something out and it will sound like it's countering something that we're talking about. It's like well no that he's he's coming from a different philosophy of lifting. It's not necessarily that it's right or wrong or my way's right his way's wrong. It's just that depending on your pursuit and your way of training it can determine how that piece of content is is interpreted. And so the yes. average person sometimes doesn't understand how to do that. It turns into like, oh, well, he says this. Well, it's like, mm -hmm. okay, yeah, that that's yeah. true, but this is also true. Speaking of which, his certification is one of the only ones. Uh, there's very few certifications that really tackle workout programming in a way where I'm yeah. impressed. To his, the physiological level. Yeah, like he, he really, because workout programming, there's a lot of nuance. Yeah. Uh, there's, you know depending on who you're working with and the client and, you know, that really, it could, it could vary so greatly on how you would program a workout. And there's so many moving parts. Um, his, his is one of the better ones where well, you look at it. Actually, I would say one of the best ones where you look at how they taught, they teach programming, like how to construct effective workouts. They do a really good job. He's one of the only ones I know too, that has sort of a, a living breathing course that, that they constantly change based on current research. Yes. And, and he's always addressing that, uh, with these group calls and, and, you know, informing all the coaches and he keeps it like super, super current. Like a lot of these other certifications are, are kind of dinosaur these days. Well, there's a reason why he's been accepted into these circles, like the NFL and the NBA. Like, I mean, he's, every time I look up, he's at another like NBA camp, NFL camp, working with some pro athlete, like I mean, he's definitely he's he's moving around in very respected circles like that. That you can't just he's, anybody can get he's into. He's gonna be teaching us his cert here live, right? What's the date that he's doing it? It's in March, I think. It yeah, middle of March, middle 15th. here here in our in our gym. He's teaching it live. Yes, yes, that's correct. And I'm getting a better URL put together here right now. <laughs> oh. The URL sucks. <laughs> we're gonna help him out. Like, the there's URL. like five dashes and you know. Bunch yeah, of so like, colon, we're gonna, colon. We're gonna change the my, uh, URL to mindpumpl1.com. Okay. And I believe it's the 15th, 16th, and 17th, okay. if and I'm not mistaken. Here. First 10 people that sign up have access to watch a, a, a live show. Correct. Right? Recording, okay. mm -hmm. recording for us. And then the day before, which is Friday, is you can, you can come down and do a meet and greet with us. Is that right? Well, that's correct. So the meet and greet's on Friday, and the live show is on Friday, Friday morning. Got okay. it. Yeah. Okay. And okay. then the next day, next two days are the right. actual certification. Look right, at cool. uh, Sal, Sal and you didn't make the cut, huh? Yep. No. What's up hey, with the picture? We don't want too many. Oh, 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 there we are. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Man, I see finally got sales with just uh, Adam <laughs> Justin. Hey, I think they've I'm, done a lot of testing. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> when we see, when I see pictures like this, I'm hey, like, wouldn't that be I, funny? Do any of our partners split test our stuff? I wonder if that to see who does better, whose yeah. picture? Yeah, oh. yeah. Well, you guys make every thumbnail. I'm like one <laughs> every like fifty thumbnails. I'm just, like, oh, cool, we'll cool. Be more handsome. <laughs> Thank, uh, thanks, uh, uh, production you team. I appreciate your love. I don't know how fucking beat face gets it all the time. I get it. You talk a lot. That's all it is. I just say a lot of stuff. Today's YouTube giveaway is Maps Anabolic Advanced. Here's how you can enter to win. Leave a comment below this video on the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comment section. Our sale this month is as follows. Maps Performance, half off. And the Extreme Fitness Bundle of workout programs is also half off. You can find both of those by clicking on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. Speaking of my face, when I, see, the guy, when I see these fine. old pictures here of us, did I walk through like an accelerated aging portal at some point? <laughs> How does, I saw a video of myself. Oh, yeah. So Jessica filmed me. I had these, my, my son has these dinosaur toys and my daughter, my one and a half, you know, my 15 month old daughter and my three year old son are on my lap and I'm playing with the dinosaurs and she filmed me. It's a cute video, right? So then she sends it to me, sends it to the family. I'm looking at it. I'm like, I look like, I look like a no, no. I look like a grandfather, a grandfather. Like with his grandkids. Oh, oh. oh no. Hey, when does that happen hey, to us, man. dude? That's oh. that'll be a shot, right? Oh. When someone asks you, it's like, oh, is that your grandchild? Oh, come on, dude. Oh, <laughs> that's gonna be that's a shot. how I've been able to redirect Courtney's like, you know, some some bits of like inclination. Oh, well, maybe another kid. I'm like, you're gonna be a grandma. Like, yeah, dude. <laughs> let's focus on that. Wait, is she bringing that up? Is she bring that up every once in a while? No, I mean, no, just like it. Don't get me maybe, excited. No, no, no. It's not, it's, not, it's not a Don't thing. Don't let me I put the South down. blessing yeah. on Shut you. it down. Would okay. you even consider that right now? Where How far along you are no. right now? No. Yeah, I feel no, like you've did. crossed yeah. over. Do you remember at that what age they were when you're like, there's no turning back now, there's no more? Yeah, it was probably... Probably five, right? Four or five. <laughs> Whenever it was two. It was like, <laughs> 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 we're good, like, dude. That's it. Yeah, we're, we're, we're man it's to man. We so do zone. much <laughs> work. Cause, so we organized, Jessica and I organized our weeks now to where one, one or two days a week. So her and I... We'll have a day where we're out. Uh, like I'm not working, but I'm out. Or one day where she's just off, right? So last week it was uh, Thursday. So Thursday it was me and the kids all day. Me and the little ones all day long. And I, I tell you what, man. I have so much respect for stay-at-home parents. No way in hell would I do that. No. It is so demanding yeah. and just nonstop. And my kids are everywhere. And all you do is feed them and clean up after them. That's basically it. 90% of the time. <laughs> Yeah. Is feeding them and cleaning up after them. Now, have and you guys match. have you guys yeah. got to a place where you guys actually have to schedule sex, or can you? Can no, it, can it, okay, it ha yeah. happens organically yeah, still yeah, for yeah. you. Yeah. I feel like that's not when, on the calendar. That's though. when it gets rough, yeah. right? Yeah. Who I just saw one of our like friends that we know ben. in the pot. Is was it Ben? Yeah, that viral was yeah, that Ben. You know, it's Ben, dude. He's probably it was Ben. That's huh? so Ben. <laughs> That's such a Ben thing. You have different skeleton. titles. Yeah. yeah, I feel like like yeah. shoot for this. Well, thing. I mean, he yeah. was presenting it like it's like a, a he breaks it down. Like it's a good thing. Where I feel like if like I feel like Katrina and I'd have a talk. Like, hey, if we get to the point where we have to schedule sex, like, do we need therapy? Or we you need can to also work make it fun if it's scheduled. Think about that. Imagine if you looked at your calendar right now. You're like four o'clock. Oh yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then you start, you know, you get ready know. for it. No? You don't no. like that? No. Code name date. I mean, it doesn't mean that there's not times where we like her and I are like, hey, Friday, we're going off to whatever and someone's watching the kid. And so obviously I know what's going to happen there. But you don't say it. Yeah. Well, and there's also plenty of times leading up to that where it happens. So yeah. it's just, I, if it got to a point in our relationship where... I felt I needed a calendar sex. I feel like there's more going on in the relationship than just you know fucking what, busy. You know what though? It tr here's what trips me out. Like my grandparents or my parent, my my dad. My dad grew up. Let's see how many siblings. Six siblings in in like two bedrooms. Like after three kids, where does parents have sex? How, how did they find a way to have sex to have the other three kids? How, how did that happen? My grandfather lived <laughs> with with everybody in the room. My grandfather yeah. lived in a cement room about as big as this with with uh, eight siblings. Apparently, all he needs and a, a donkey bag. in the same room. How do his parents keep having kids? That's what I want to know. Yeah. They go around the corner, come back, you know. So yeah. it works. Yeah, I guess that's that's my whole point. I guess. Anyway, I was going to ask you, Adam, when but, you were like bodybuilding, like tip top, like just jacked, right? Oh God, here comes. I what percentage? Right now. What percentage of 
comments in the gym came from men? Oh. And what percentage of comments came from women? <laughs> the same amount when I drive a cool car. You know what it's, it's all dudes. It's, it's, I think it's, it's one of the funniest dudes. things ever is that the stuff that men do. Women don't give a shit. To get attention yeah, from it women. It attracts other dudes. It only it attracts, attracts other dudes. Dude. No, no chick has ever walked up to me in the best shape of my life. The, I tell you what, the only time I got attention like that was Las Vegas when after the show and, right. and we're out on the That's pool. That's why you remember it. That, it's, it's, it's right. It's the, most, it's the most memorable day of my life because so for Very the first rare. time in my life, all that work I'd put in finally, oh, look, so a bunch of women finally paid attention yeah. and noticed. All the other times in the gym has always been a man walking up to me and say, oh, man, nice whatever. You know what I'm saying? Dude, Making a compliment. happened to me today. A guy mm-hmm. walked up to me. He's like, he's like, you know, so I can put my headphones down. He's like, dude, your shoulders round, bro. Like, <laughs> <laughs> fist bump. <laughs> you should be like, you want to feel him? No, no. Uh, I mean, I like the compliment, but I'm also like, okay. Yeah. What you know? is it? What is it for? So well, what I do women do that, that's the same? Is there is there something on the woman's side that she does to get to get main, men's attention, but it only gets other women's attention? Is uh, that was it work on the reverse? Probably shoes. And what do you think? Like I understand. Uh, yeah. Well, I just heard this recently that a lot of plastic surgery is really done discouraged by their partners. Yeah. So and okay, it's that's done a for good women. I believe that. Yeah. I believe that. Mm. I believe that for sure. Like I, I, I remember, in fact, I had a girlfriend one time where yeah. she, this was back, this was before they the lip injection things became head. like a real popular thing where everybody was doing it. It was like kind of new. This is like 15, 15 years ago. Right. Mm-hmm. So, and she really wanted to get done. I'm like, why you have great lips. There's no reason. Why would you do that? And she's, a, and we actually kind of got into it about it. And I'm like, don't do that. And I was gone for vacation for a week. I came back and she had done that. So and like, if it was for me, like she wouldn't have done that, but it obviously wasn't for me. It was obviously yeah. for the attention. That's a good point. I didn't even think about mm-hmm. that. Yeah, but, uh, I bet a big percentage of it is that is for is more, which is the same thing for men, right? You're lifting and you're not really getting the attention of women. You're competing with other men. Totally. So it's like the same. same Hundred percent. It's like that meme. What's that meme where there's a guy and he's like, "Hey, what machine in here can I use that will get the most attention from women?" And then the guy points the, to the ATM. ATM. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one. Every that's time. time. That's the one. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I almost, and so check this out. I, I anticipate an altercation today too at the gym. So I'm working out. <laughs> what? I'll tell you. So I'm lifting and the, the way the parking lot is situated. So I go to UFC Fit every once in a while, right? Uh, good gym. My, my buddy, Don Cardona, VP. Do you there. see him when you go in there? No, because uh, he's- It's yeah. too early. Yeah, it's early. Mm-hmm. But uh, great, great gym. It's like great equipment, right? Bodybuilding equipment. They have great racks uh, for powerlifting and weightlifting. We had their staff like in here uh, for a bit, didn't we? We did. Yeah. We did when we did our, cool. our, our launch of our trainer course. So anyway, I'm working out and, and there's a there's a front parking spot. And then there's like this kind of like weird angled. It's not really a parking spot. It's just like extra space. You ever seen those? Yeah. Where you could probably park a motorcycle in there or whatever. So I park my car. I go in and work out. And I'm in that- in the, in the, the normal spot, right? I come out and some dude literally Part of it. right. There's no way I could squeeze into my car. Uh, so I'm done with my workout. I'm like, am I going to, I have to go inside and page someone to come out. You know, get it's that car. bad. It was so I could, there's no way I could open my car. Somebody did that to me recently too. Yeah. Yeah. It so was, yeah, we were at a school and, and it, I didn't, I thought it was like, I don't know. Cause there was, I mean, I drove the nicer car and it was like, it was just weird. It was, they were literally, Right, like almost like scratching the paint close, and I'm like, who does that's on that? purpose? Yeah, it's got to it be on deliberate. Purpose. It felt deliberate. So I anticipate an altercation because you feel like this guy did that on purpose because I kind of parked over a little bit, knowing that's not a parking spot. So I'm just gonna give myself a little more room uh, for the other car. Um, so I'm like, I bet you this guy thought he was being like he saw me, thought I was a dick, so he, whatever. So I'm like, yeah. oh man, asking me an altercation. So I go inside, <laughs> I tell the girl, can you please page the owner of the black whatever whatever? So she pages it. And uh, to my delight, it's the old, there's this old guy that works out every morning. Oh no. And he's in his seventies. Right. And he's just this old kind of crusty. You're going to fight a 70 year old guy? No, but I love it. Right. (laughs) (laughs) I'll win for sure. We're going to lose fans. No fear. Oh, you want to fight. You're like, I got this. I got this. No, he comes out. He's pissed off. (laughs) Oh really? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm like, Hey, I don't think that's a parking spot. He's like, I parked there every morning. Yeah. And he's, he's an old guy. He's always, and I respect him because I see him working out. He works out hard. He's this old dude. Where's this like sweater when he works out. Hey, listen, my apologies, sir. I apologize. I'm, so I'm giving him respect, you know, so he moved out of the way. It's just funny to see the old Wow, you're such a nice guy. That's nice. Seven year old man. What am I going to do? Yeah, fight him. No. <laughs> <laughs> what's the cutoff, bro? Who's boss. Well, yeah, what's the cutoff? I mean, you're, not, hey, you're not a spring chicken anymore. No. <laughs> Where's the, where the cutoff of fighting? Like, yeah. you know, because, okay, obviously you fight a 57 uh, year old guy. Would I? Mm. What? I don't know. 
What? Come on, a couple years older than you? That's a couple. That's a lot older, than me, bro. <laughs> but I feel like if you're at the gym, it's usually just like a, a peacocking thing where you end up like bumping chests. You know, like, yeah. yeah. You move your car. Well, yeah. I don't know. It's a UFC Let's, gym. It could I, be an MMA guy. You know, I want to know the right. cutoff. What's there's got to be? A, have you thought about this? You always got to find. I feel this. like they look really old, and I'm not going to do anything. You know what <laughs> if I mean? you just look, yeah. At, if I look at, him, like, uh, he was like an old, like I've seen him work. I out. feel like Justin would probably fight the oldest guy. Just, me? He yeah. Has no feel. Yeah. He has no. I feel like just. I mean. Justin would beat a guy with a with a walker if he had a chance. Dude. No, no, I'm not violent like that. You guys, relax. Kick the walker. Out. I mean, I'll say things. You know, I'll no. definitely say things. No, I mean, if I, if it's an, it's, I always show a lot. I was raised that way. When they're a lot older than you, yeah, you just you get up, you give them your chair, you say you're sorry. A decade. You, you call them you know, a decade. Fifty five. If they're fit, yeah, then we'll throw them down. But if they're like old, like you know decrepit, no. Yeah, I feel like there's got to be like a like an, a point where you don't you don't do that, but then it's acceptable. And then I, what happens if he engages you like that and he's that old guy mm, doing yeah. that? I would have apologized to him. Sorry, uh, sir. Yeah, who cares? Oh, that's yeah, he, he must have looked really old then. Yeah, he did. Yeah, but you know he's in there every morning working out. I was so happy that it was him because I'm like, this is gonna be some meatheads gonna walk out. It's gonna be a problem, but it wasn't. <laughs> thankfully, it was all good. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. Hey, so this weekend I took my my fourteen year old daughter shooting for the. I first time. saw that, bro. Nice. The, the video you sent, I did get a little nervous because she like looked back to look at to, yeah, look, at, yeah, to yeah. look if you were recording her, oh, and she drags the gun across <laughs> the thing. I'm like, whoa, dude! I was like, hey, yeah. Does she enjoy it? Love a good it. time. Yeah. Fearless, fearless. Oh, wow. I show her how to do it. This is how you load it. Take keep your it's finger like off. Empowering for him, dude. Yeah. Dude, so and it's that. a revolver. It's, it's got a little bit of kick, but she she was up there and she's got aim, dude. So. So you know how you can, when you go to the range, you can get different targets. You can pay for different kind of targets. So she wanted to get the ones that have pictures of like, 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 you know, bad guys on. Okay. I okay. thought it was Donald Trump. She was shooting. No, that's, what, what, that's what it looked like. No, it's just, bro. They, they haven't changed these since 1985. All of them uh, look like. So it's just some eighties. The guy same guy. Like, bro, there's one guy, he's holding a gun, but he's got like big shoulder plaid, you know, jacket on or whatever. So, you know, this is from the eighties. Yeah. Yeah. But she's shooting him, and then she goes, football, watch this. I'm going to shoot him in his, in his junk. And she hit him right in the, <laughs> right in the dick. Just lasered it. Yeah, dude. I'm like, You're like I, gotta, I don't uh, got to worry about it. I got emotional on the inside. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. that's my girl. I'm so proud. I'm so proud. Yeah, I'm shot so proud. right in the junk. Yeah, you taught her but we, well. But we, she, you know, we, we hit the targets, and then we're gonna, she's going to put them up in a room. It's like uh, decoration. Oh, God. That's kind of cool, right? That is cool. Big boys come over. That's kind of cool right there. I see that. Exactly. That's, I like that idea. 100%. I like and, that. and he's got three small yeah, holes. I like that. I like that. like shells lined that's a great strategy yeah. right there. Oh, hey, yeah. speaking of Trump, did you see his uh, sneakers? No, what? You didn't see this? No. Oh, Doug pulled up. Pull up the new Trump shoes. Wait, what? He has wanted, them or like, someone else? No, he dropped. He dropped a collaboration. No, with who? Uh, what yeah, what yeah, company? I, I, I want to see. I want to see how. To oh, I think it's his own line, not a collaboration. Sorry. Uh, oh my yeah. god. You see him? <laughs> yeah. Pull, pull him up for the guys. Up pull up for like shoes. I mean, oh, he did the. Didn't he do the trading card thing too? You got the one down. Has he been hanging out with the Kanye too much? Oh, they're gold. You know those are going to be instantly worth a lot of money. That, so that's wow. why I'm, I'm really curious to see how well they did as far as... Can you find me some... Andrew, find me some stats on like what... I the, want to see a close-up of this. Trump shoes. Wow. Yeah, they're gold and they have like kind of like American flag on the <laughs> Oh, heel. there we are. There you go. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's that's a lot right there. You know what? Can I just tell you something right now? I mean, that's like... You People, wear that... I thought the uh, red... Make America Great Again hat was like a statement. Like, that's dude. about as loud as it gets. Do you know why he's so smart? Do you know why there's he's so, so many influencers me, are gonna buy me. that? Do you know who's gonna wear those? Who do you yeah. think's gonna wear those? Like everybody on tell YouTube. He's got more pull among the he, he's got more pull than almost any president I've ever seen with the hip hop community, with the community that, you know, urban like that, that those shoes right there are gonna be on all over influencers. You think so? I I bet you. Sold out. They're already sold, sold out. Sold out. Oh four hundred bucks. For a pair? For a pair. <laughs> I mean, that's not too crazy. Only a thousand pairs. Oh, oh, he only did a, wow. a thousand pairs. Yeah. You, you know you're going to sell one of those That's, for Oh, yeah. Nice well, no, for sure. I didn't know he did a limited run. That was pretty smart. Yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Because those will, those will resell for more. For, just yeah. Oh, he's got more. He's got the he's got red ones. He's got Trust white ones. Shoe Wait, game. what's I'm that sorry, perfume? He's got cologne. <laughs> the, the okay, so this was always what my my thought when he first ran for president was always this was, he was a, he's a, a business it. play. Yeah, yeah, it was like yeah. he's going to use this as a way to parlay into making himself oh, merchandising of everything now. Yeah. No kidding. I'll buy his hairspray. <laughs> it works. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. That's good. No, you got to switch TV down here now. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I would. Uh, that's got to be a smart. That's a pretty smart strategy. So I'm assuming all the proceeds go to his campaign. Then, 
Mm. Oh, that's a good question. I didn't, I don't know the whole, like what the, I don't know the whole strategy of what he's doing right now. I just, I thought, again, I thought like his original. Well, look, his hat is, is the hat that he did is, which when I, when he first came out with it, it's so basic, right? But it's yeah. one of the most vi like, um, recognizable political pieces of apparel Ever, ever. Yeah. ever. They've that never, and no the, one's ever successful. That and the sold. Obama shirt. It's the so Obama divisive. shirt is one of the most famous shirts ever. That that yeah. with they and you've now seen both of those like redone a thousand times now, yep. right? That's how you know it's like gotten so popular. Is that how many people have redone that the the colorway of the That's red crazy. red and white writing? Did you guys see you? Maybe you've seen you saw this, Justin. So you know the WEF, right? The World Economic Forum, oh, yeah. uh, aka uh, Satan. Anyway, yeah, they yeah. came yeah. out. This was released. So you know how in China they have a, a social credit score? Mm -hmm. So for people who don't know, a social credit score in China, they will rank everything that you do that's pro what the government thinks is a good, good thing or anti what they, you know, what they think is a good thing. In other words, if you do bad stuff, which mm -hmm. could be anything from a political post, liking a post, saying something, going to the wrong restaurant, hanging out with people who are not liked by the government who have a low score, mm -hmm. um, all this stuff. And then based off the score in China, you can, they can prevent you from flying. They can prevent you from uh, pulling money out of the bank, uh, you know, renting a car. Don't they also, things. don't they, don't they hit you too for like uh, if I have a friend yes. who's got yeah. like a low score with that too, yeah, I I'll get fix your score. Yeah. In fact, their phones will alert. If I, if my phone will beep when I'm near someone that has a low score and I have to move away from them. Otherwise my score will go down. This is how their score. Anyway, so people here in the U.S. are like, oh, my God, that's dystopian. Yeah. That would be terrible yeah. if we ever did something like that here. Well, they are talking about, and I'll read to you, they're talking about a social ESG score. No. Oh, wow. Social ESG score, yeah. So ESG is, um, Great. you know, this is their, their credit score, right? Like, and I'll read to you what it says here. So they're comparing it to a personal credit score. But this is about, um, this is about understanding a person's risk, uh, when it comes to other decisions that they make. So companies are of the view that a person who is not dedicated to corporate sustainability cannot be entrusted with the task. So I'll read to you what it says here. Um, a personal ESG score works like a credit score, but it differs fundamentally because it rates an individual's ESG risk. So that's what, what is that? Equity. What does ESG stand for? Equity, okay. social, and and then I, I forget Something what else. Yeah. yeah, environmental, social, and governance. Yeah. There it is. So if you you know don't do the right thing or whatever, your social ESG score will get hammered, and then they're trying to find a way to get this like companies to have to react. So to they're this. trying to pressure like your Facebooks and your yes. Twitter. And well, did you else. see what uh, Disney just recently with Elon Musk? No, that was crazy. Yeah, that was all ESG type stuff, yeah, wasn't it? They leaked out, um, I guess, some emails on their way of a a accomplishing diversity and stuff like that. It's very. I sent it to Sal, but I don't think I sent it to the group. But yeah. it's, did you see that, Justin? No, I didn't see that. Oh, but, all over that type of but stuff. But to your, yeah, I know. Uh, so, you know, John Stewart's back on the Daily Show yeah. for like one day a week. And he's kind of, you know, he's he's bringing it back, trying to bring some levity to the whole, we're going back into this election cycle. And like, he's making fun of both sides. And like, you know, everybody's. So he had a show, I guess, on Apple that uh, they ran a few uh, pilots and they they pulled it and they're like why do you pull it and I guess because of the ties between like China and uh, they were talking about AI in China one of his like upcoming episodes and like basically got um, the crackdown like they got a message um, to 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 handle this because it wasn't going to put them in a good light so like they basically got pressured to drop his series uh, from Apple which is crazy wow. that they have that kind of leverage you know he, but he, it, but they do a lot of business obviously in China so he did a good job his uh, political humor was like brilliant back in the day and whether you agree with him or not he did it in such a way that I thought was really it was smart yeah. yeah it was really really smart I never really followed him that much really mm -mm. he's really good he does a good job of I don't I don't agree with a lot of his takes but I like the way he presents them he does it in a way where and I can appreciate that in respect I mean who would you compare is he Bill Maher-esque Bill I Maher mean? Bill Maher's way more crass way more but Bill Maher yeah. also you know I'll, I'll appreciate some of the stuff he says because he seems to be pretty consistent and and somewhat balanced. It doesn't seem like he's all like he'll change his tune just because he's supposed to. Type yeah, of deal. yeah. Just he's he's definitely. I mean, satire, and it, he's pretty good at, at like just taking the news and putting kind of a funny take on it. But 
Um, you know, he obviously has his own bias and it comes through a bit, but yeah, it's, oh, there it is. I remember when we used to think that, um, the decentralized internet would make everybody so, uh, more, so much more free, less control, but they're, they're using it now to really find ways of controlling people, especially with like facial recognition technology and all that stuff. <sighs> It's well, wild. That, I mean, it's concerning, right? I mean, I can't believe more people aren't concerned about this whole thing. Well, think the about credit this, score. It's yeah, like, dude, it's a real possibility. Think about this way. You try to get a loan, you try to buy something, your credit score pops up. And that is to let lenders know. Um, I mean, it's already kind of crazy when you do that. Right. Now, that alone, that kind of makes sense, okay? But your credit score doesn't follow you to like you're going to get on a dating site or you're oh, yeah. going to meet someone or yeah, but it's, it is, post on social it's media. It's so fucked up how they decide like what you're going to get hit like for or like how bad. like It can definitely be messed up. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's like, I, no, I'm not a fan of like how we even structured that. Like but, it makes sense to, if you're going to go to other creditors that you should have some sort of tracking like of your help, history, right. but it's, it's an arbitrary number that's bullshit. Like one of the things that killed me was when I short sold my first house when I was 20 something years old, like that fucked me for like seven years. Yeah. I had never in my entire life. Right. So I had cards and credit went from a very early age. Just by one eight. hit. One hit. Yeah. Wow. And it was a short sell. Like something that I decided to What did do. your credit score go down? Oh, for? bro. I was a 750 and it moved me all the way down to 400 and something. Wow. And then one thing. And then what, why it's such bullshit is that. Once it hits you like that, then nobody wants to touch you. And so the only way to rebuild your credit is to get more credit and prove you get. I couldn't even get like a cable bill. Bro, there was a point. There was a point, okay, years later. I don't know how many years later this was. I want to say it's like four or five years later where I went. I had always banked with Bank of America. I had over $100,000 in this account. And I couldn't get a, a prepaid credit card for $500 from Bank of America. Prepare? Who Prepare? I, yes. That's crazy. It was, I got denied. Like, that, that's how fucked up it is. It's like one one thing that had happened and all the things that I had done. Well, so now take that to the millionth degree with this social credit it, That's score. why it's yeah. a crazy. Where, it's crazy that people think it would be an okay idea. Do, well, you they guys, could, do you guys, like on Venmo, you know how you can do like a public like transact, like you could show like what you're buying and all yeah. like, I'm so uncomfortable with that. I'm mm -hmm. always like private, but some people like, you know, that they, they told take full advantage of that and kind of, I don't know if it's like bragging or why that feature is even in there, but I heard one of the parents actually talking about it the other day and I was laughing because, you know, this guy realized that like people were following his transactions. And so he started to like, you know, buy fake, like really um, uh, inappropriate stuff, like masks and like, you know, like, like a lot of sexual things and like, you know, to, to, to create this like really weird, bizarre persona in there. And like, and, I know, don't like, know what the point of, I've, I don't even know. Why I, do they do that? That? So, so yeah, like my Venmo, I have private, right? So nobody can but see. Why would someone want it to be, public? but most it's the default is public. So, yeah. I, so anybody can follow you. Yeah. Well, they, yeah. They so, see your, your, yeah, yeah. It's just, so it's, it's structured like social media in the sense of like, I, if I, if I do a, a Venmo transaction to you, do you have Venmo or no? No. Oh, you don't even have uh -huh. it. Okay. So if you have like a Venmo, the, same way I would look you up to send you money is just like on Instagram. You'd have an at Sal De Stefano, oh. and then I would just send that money. Yeah, there. it's a social network. That's yes, literally why. Yeah, I mean, so it's kind of, but nobody uses it like that. Yeah, as like, far why? as I know, yeah. but maybe that's maybe I'm being a boomer right now. Like maybe it is like this super popular. I think some way people to, are into it. I'm like, I'm that again. That's why I bring that up because I'm trying to find out. Like, what's the uh, what's the hook there? Like, why are people? Are you trying to flex or something? Well, I, yeah, right. Is I don't. That, I don't know. Is ego I mean, thing? Andrew, you're way younger than we are. What, is that like a thing? Like, do you guys like? It's just the social network thing. But I mean, do you use it like no. that? No. Like, yeah, you don't find yourself like scrolling through people's Venmos, do you? No, not, not at all. I mean, you remember, uh, so in China they have, I forget the name of the the the, uh, the platform, but it's it's like a PayPal yeah, meets I Instagram meets like all. Like, yeah, it's, yeah, I remember. Isn't I that remember. what uh, originally what Elon's plan for Twitter was, yes. was to make it this like, especially Is with it this. WeChat? Might be. Yeah, yeah it's WeChat. WeChat. It's called WeChat? Right. Yeah. Right, and it, it, now that is like. Instagram meets Venmo meets right, all right. of it together. So then I guess it makes sense if you can create a platform like that where it's all in one, but to, and maybe, maybe Venmo thought that maybe when they, when they did it, they thought, Oh, maybe we could rival Instagram and, and Facebook and these other social platforms. But I've always thought that was interesting. Why people even want their stuff, yeah. why you would want that public. 
Unless it is like a flex, no idea. I don't yeah, know. I don't. I always do like whenever I have to pay someone, I always make something up that's really like <laughs> terrible. Yeah. Well, well, what you yeah. say? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I do always like if I gotta pay somebody you on put, Venmo, put massage. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I'm way worse. I just say some. If, if your shit's public and you fucking need me to pay you, you're fucked. The dazzled because I'm gonna say some yeah. really outrageous yeah. shit on there because <laughs> just for that reason because yeah. I think it's hilarious. I think it's like okay, if you're gonna put it public, then I'm gonna put some weird Waxing. shit on here. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh man. Speaking of networks and stuff, so there's. This, uh, this this article went viral. I, I I cracked up when I saw it. This mom is suing this Christian school because they're banning her from taking her kids there. You guys want to guess why? Uh, yeah, fans only. Yeah, dude. She oh, tried. Oh, interesting. Well, no, it's not just that. She dro- She drops them off in her. I don't know what she drives an Escalade, and on the back of it is her, her link. Insta- her link. Her big ass link on the back window. Interesting. And I'm like, and then she's suing them. I'm like, what do you think was going to happen? Well, it's a private school. Yeah, they yeah. have the right to say no, right? They do, but but what do you think is going to happen? You uh, pose nude on a on a site, you drop your kids off. Uh, the other parents. What do you think about you? that? Like I've thought about that before. Like some of these, uh, I mean, we obviously know a, kid, lot, a lot of people. <laughs> I, just, I just feel bad for the. Well, kids. I know. So that. So what do you think? I mean, um, uh, that's going to be like the 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 big thing that kids in high school get bullied of, like your mom who's on. The you know, it's way. happening, dude. Oh yeah, oh a hundred percent. I mean, if it's not already a popular thing that's happening now, it will be because the only fans is really only blown up in what the last five years. Yeah. So give it some time in the next, you know, ten years when like so many people have been doing it for a long time. Like, and you're in high. I can only imagine the kid. Yeah. Going to school Plus it and full your mom. I know. Yeah, I know. And then they go to full description and be like, oh. Plus, it doesn't go oh. away. It's digital. Yeah, you know, it's not like a magazine where it's like, okay, let's wait a few years and the thing's out of circulation. There it is, right there. Oh, it said, was that Durango? Yeah, that's her. That's her. Yeah, thing right only there. fans. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Like, Hyper of course, fawns. Of course, not, not they're gonna. Small. It's pretty deliberate. Of course. Now you know what's funny about this. Do we have her handle so we can check? Yeah, we do. Okay. <laughs> I wonder. Hey, I wonder if just ask. She's for a suing. We're them. gonna help her out. Yeah. I wonder if she's suing them so that this becomes an article so that she I mean, gets more. I tell you what. I bet you she oh got a shit ton. Of, brilliant. It is. I, what did I just say? I'm like, yeah, what's her just, handle? I get, and if if that's her play, like smart businesswoman. Like if that, like if she knows, like the lawsuit's going to go nowhere, yeah. but it's going to make the news because she's oh, doing yeah. that. Is she that smart? That's like really. That's like three D chess. That's three D chess. If she's like, I know I'm not going to win this, this but I'm going to make a big fuss about it because it's going to get me all this. That's stuff. her right oh there, God. right here. Wow. That's not, <laughs> that literally looks like somebody's mom. Not the, like, <laughs> not the most flattering photo. Just, right there. just it, it does. Like, come on, dude. Just wow. just said that literally looks like someone's it mom. Does look like it is. Mom. It does look like I know, mom. but it's not like you know. How many followers does she have? Can we? Can you see that on there? Like, you no see fans, how many likes? But you know, can you see? Yeah, how, does OnlyFans let you see followers and stuff like that or no? Hey Doug, you're subscribed. I saw. <laughs> it says "Welcome back." <laughs> My uh, dark little secret here, Dougie. <laughs> Welcome back, Dougie. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate all the Amazon gifts. Fucking Doug. Yes. Fucking Doug. Oh, my hella God. DMs oh. there. Yeah. I, like, I saw a stat. So here's the worst part about it. Because here's the thing: if wow. your mom's on OnlyFans and she's balling, you know what I'm saying? It's yeah. like, oh, it sucks. It's embarrassing, but it's like, yeah, mom's balling. So that's I get to drive a, a Porsche to school. So yeah. whatever. Yeah. But I think the percentage of of women that actually make good money, tiny. On, it's so tiny, sp- tiny, tiny. Yes. Tiny. It's like ninety five percent make yep. hardly anything. Oh my god! It. I heard Dude. a story. I read another story. So if I said. feel like if I'm gonna if I'm a mom and I'm gonna make the move to if I'm gonna commit to doing something like that, it was like the sleeve tattoo for me. Like I waited mm. until I was. Like, I'm, oh, never I'm, for I'm never working. I'm never working for. Either gonna be a chef I, or self Bro, hundred percent. <laughs> like I, oh, I wanted a sleeve tattoo yeah. when I was like seventeen years old, and I was like, yeah, you're I better, I better best cover friend. my you're ass gonna... first. <laughs> that I won't need to get a job somewhere. Obviously, well, back then, it, it's different now, right? Yeah. It's more accepted. But I literally had that same thought process of like, wait, I need to make sure that I'm D- good. Dude, I saw another article. <laughs> this this woman had an OnlyFans, and she she had this top, like, I don't what do they call them? Top fan? I don't know. This guy would talk to her don't daily. Know don't know. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's like, stupid. You, know, stupid. you, get, you get like special <laughs> star, yeah, I mean, I've stupid, heard. Yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> no, because I know. I like he doesn't know the terminology. I know, because I know. It's like $25 with the, extra. I know with prostitutes, it's called a, uh, what do they call them? A John. A, a John. Okay, yeah, so yeah. I don't know if, it, anyway. So this but, this but, woman kept having this 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 man would talk to her every day, give her money every single day, whatever. She he would say he said a couple things to her that made her kind of her hair stand on end. And she's like, "What?" So she did a little research. It was her stepfather. 
she found out her actual stepfather. I saw that was contacting her that. and watching her and commenting and donating to her. Oh, yeah, dude. Ew, well, you know that disgusting. Happened. Just based off of uh, <laughs> like top porn videos, you know that's that's happening all the time. It it's like it's no, always it's why yeah, the stepmom, your stepmom, stepdad, step something is always like a Terrible. top a top video or what like that. That's disgusting. You see a lot of crossover too between that that going on where you see this uh, on like um, on Pornhub where there is their only <laughs> oh, <no>. fans. <laughs> Don't, don't act like you don't know. This I haven't been on like, for hey, have no a idea. long time. <laughs> I told you. Why am I Six days? No, bro. Oh. It's been a while. Oh, has it, yeah. has it really been a long, long time? Long time. Really? Yeah. Wow. It's been wow. a long time. I mean, I never was, so it's like not a big deal to me to yeah. like to not to not go without that. But now do you know do you know very many people that like that's a like a major thing? Or is that something like that nobody ever shares? Like nobody talks about that. It's a big problem. It's a big problem. Well, it's massive. Remember when we looked up the, the viewer the yeah. views on it is like it, Well no, like, just do my research on, on how it affects the brain, how it affects relationships, how it affects society. It we are literally dealing with so it's worse than a drug because it is also modifying and dealing with a innate human driver. So you you see how bad food is, right? How bad it's how much obesity is spread, and yeah. it's like a yeah, majority yeah. of people because this you know these hyper palatable foods are also dealing with an innate driver. Cocaine is not dealing with an innate driver. Alcohol isn't dealing with an innate driver. Heroin isn't dealing with an innate driver. Pornography is dealing with an innate human, you know, something that drives us as humans. So the data on it coming back is just, it's insane. I, I never thought it was like, as like terrible, but I, I started, as I started doing research, I was like, this is, this is not good. Interesting that you, really would, you would compare it to drugs and being worse. Than the you. way that it affects the brain. When they do brain scans, it affects behaviors. I mean, isn't it, drugs are like that though too. They are, but yeah. they're, but it's, uh, if you look at the data again on how it affects just other behaviors. Um, I mean, where I would, the argument I would make that it's as bad or worse is that, it, like food, it's accepted, right? So there's this. Accept oh, that's the other side of it. So the, the acceptance around it is like because you're not, you don't, you don't, you don't log into a a, a porn site and go like, oh, I'm doing a line of coke, right? No. Now. You don't think like that. Just no. like when you go to the refrigerator and for the third time in yeah. a row in right. an hour, you don't go like, oh, I'm doing a line. Of, you don't. You just think you're eating food, no right. big deal, or you go numb to it and you don't think about it. You think you justify that it's. It's food and you need it. I feel mm -hmm. like that's kind of where it would No, be and it's got the classic uh like uh toler build up a tolerance, need new novelty for more stimulation, withdrawal. It's all classic uh, drug symptoms. Mm. Pretty crazy. I'm trying to find a, a expert to come on the show to talk about Yeah, it. you've I talked think. about I, I think yeah. that would actually be a really good to dive into that. It'd be an <laughs> interesting conversation mm -hmm. just because I you know, whenever we bring it up, like I don't we don't talk about this really on the show, but we all I always get lots of DMs afterwards of young men that struggle with it. Big time. Yeah. Almost we didn't every grow time up with every it. time we talk mm -hmm. about it, we so here's the deal. We didn't grow up with it, so it didn't mold and model our brains like it is to these young kids. These young kids are exposed to it at 10, yeah. 11, it's usually. because it was hard to get. Yeah. It, it was very hard well, to get. Well, and um, imagine, too, like, obviously, the, we're not the only person that's talked about it in a, in a negative light. The, when it was new, and like, nobody was probably no. talking about that at all. It was just like, you know, it's just getting, for a kid, a young man, getting all that mm -hmm. access, at, it's like just dumping a bunch of candy in his lap and it being is. like, hey, don't worry, there's going to be any consequences to this at all. It, so. And it's also, I mean, it, there's a lot, lot there's a lot of direction we go with that, but I want to have an expert on the show to really break you down You know research. where you mm -hmm. can look, there was a, there was a documentary, I bet you could find somebody that from, like, if I, if, you remember that documentary that was not that long ago? I forget, it was all, it was all on the, I think the big lawsuit that happened with Pornhub. And, oh, you guys talked about it. Netflix. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Look up that because there, I, I do believe they had experts. In There's there. a woman who wrote the book. I think it's called Dopamine Dopamine Nation. Is that it? Look that up, Doug. Uh, I'm trying. I'm, I'm trying to see if I can get her on because she's local and she's a professor. Yeah. <clears throat> money shot. The that's money what it shot. was. Money in, shot. I bet yeah. Look up Dopamine <laughs> Nation, Doug. If that's a book, I don't know. I might be wrong here. But there's a, a a professor, a researcher who's who I've heard, and uh, I'd like to get. Yeah, her there's on. a book uh, by what? Anna Lem. Oh, I've seen that's that. That's the one. I've seen dopamine, that book uh, dopamine Nation, correct. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yep. Is that what that's, that is? I've seen that book. Uh -huh. I've seen people reading that book before. It's not just about porn. Oh, okay, it's, it's, about, say, it's, a, it's how the modern life is so driven and geared towards dopamine right. um, and how it's affecting us. So I, I okay, so and I, I bet this book gets into this. I think which is up there, which is just as scary, is the way we consume content. Yep. Because again, back to the like food point, like yeah. nobody, nobody goes on TikTok, right? And go like, Oh, this is so damaging. It's like maybe you go like, "Oh man, it's a guilty pleasure" or whatever that you do. But we've tr we're we're slowly training this generation coming up to not be able to sit and listen to an hour I conversation see, I, or I, watch a movie. Endless scroll. The guy who like created that has like crazy remorse over it. 
uh, because of the effect psychologically, like where we're at. Uh, Is that true? Result. Yeah. Watch a bunch oh, of 14 year olds hang out with each other. They'll hang out with each other and then get on the phones. Yeah. It's wild. I find it with us. There's Shit. no ending to things. Like, well, that, video that's games, the most no embarrassing thing I ever catch any of us do is when we go out to lunch together and then- And then we end up on our phones. Yeah. Oh. I've, oh, yeah. It's like- ugh, I know. Like, ugh, I end up, yeah, I put my phone upside down. I put it like out in front because I'm. it's weird. Yeah. And, and we're all old dudes who grew up with it. You know, yeah. it's funny. I, somebody made a comment to me one time when I was doing that, like that I was trying to hide something. And I thought, oh, that's really interesting that you, uh, you interpret that. Oh, as turn like, your phone upside down? Yes. No, it's because it's more- alluring yes if because if you up. see an alert or it'll yep. get light up or something like that i'm like yeah no that's not because i'm trying to hide exactly. it for myself <laughs> it was like only thing i'm trying to hide is my you own alerts my, telling me and I said, because exactly. if it's it's already hard enough you know if i feel mm -hmm. it that's why i take it out of my pocket and then put it out and then turn it over so i can't you know what my wife does it. now she literally turns her phone off and she'll tell me i'm turning my phone off so i know i can't get a hold of her and she puts it in a drawer and she wrote her whole schedule now in a paper um, planner and she's like, if I don't turn it off, I, I end up popping on it. And it's like huge uh, yeah. improvement to her yeah. quality of life doing that. I didn't know that's what that book, I'm, that makes me yeah. want to read that book. Now. So, hey, speaking of, of, of studies and trials, I looked into, remember how I talked about this a while ago, how Caldera did a clinical trial on their products and like how it affected people's skin. Yeah, it was, and it was like 90% of men said that. Well, positive. it was one of the best, so I didn't realize just how good the trial was. I'll pull it up to you. This was most skincare trials. I don't know if you guys know this or not are like, you know, 10 people for 30 days or whatever. They did a U.S. clinical trial. They did it with a, with a U.S. clinical research firm. It was an eight-week study, not four-week. And they did it with 53 male volunteers, 37 to 64. And it was a mix of ethnicity, skin tones, facial hair types. It was dry skin, normal skin, oily skin. And yes, 90 plus percent of people noticed improvements in fine lines and wrinkles, elasticity, skin health. They have a before and after on their page. You guys got to see what it looks like. And this is after eight weeks of, of using their products. Oh, wow. And, yeah. But they funded a study. Like that's a- How much do you factor palsy. in that most dudes like have done zero? <laughs> yeah, right. It's like, like absolute zero. And then all of a sudden <laughs> they just try a little bit. Yeah. yeah. You know? we had, it's like the client who never worked out before. Yeah. And all of a sudden they're doing like, some it's terrible make an impact on me. We had, yeah. I, I'll be in that category. We had 50 dudes wash their face. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> had amazing results. Yeah. Look at this. Crazy. Yeah. I can't yeah. believe this happened. I so I didn't know it's, that's interesting. I like other uh skincare health uh, skincare products they're, like they're crap studies. Like five people, six people. And they'll uh, they'll pick it. Yeah, it's not. There's there's just an actual I imagine legit, just like yeah, the supplement industry, there's success. the same type of pixie dusting, right? Yep. I bet in the in the skincare because the regulation is similar too, right? Is there is there's nothing that's there it's not heavily regulated, is it? Or is it Heavily regulated. It's more regulated than the supplement industry for sure, mm. but uh, skincare is not, they they don't consider the skin. That's so weird to me. So know. something. I, so you can eat, if, if you ate some of the chemical, like if you eat something, then you have to be very careful uh, with what you put in your products. If you put it on your skin, they don't consider like you absorbing it. As long as it doesn't cause, cause yeah, it. I've heard there's rash. been a lot of real problems like with people ordering from like Amazon and getting products that are that, like, they basically have uh, all these chemicals in it that, um, you know, cheapens the product in terms of making it more profitable, but it's like toxic uh, to the well, skin. Well, I read so a story. Well, so, that, so you're, to your point though, that would make more sense that the supplements would be more regulated and the skin, the skincare would be less regulated, yeah. but it's the other way around. Skincare yeah. is more but regulated. It, but skincare is not regulated super well. No, no, it's not. No. I know it's not. I know it's not hard. It's not no. like medical. Or no, I, in fact, I read an article about a young man who was using his mom's skincare products. And so I'll make, I'll, I'll let, let me back up a little. I just gave away the, the, the punchline, but he was developing gynecomastia. So he was developing breast tissue at the age of 17, which is a little old, right? If a, if a young man develops any breast tissue from excess testosterone, typically happens around 14, 15. Well, anyway, he's 17. It's happening. It keeps growing, goes to the doctor. They can't figure out what's going on. The, the doctor, very smart uh, hormone specialist said, are you using any skincare or hair, hair care products? He was using his mom's skincare products. That's what was causing the breast tissue. And would they have like wow. estrogen in it or something like well, that? These chemicals are they're xenoestrogens. They they attach to the estrogen receptor and they express the estrogen receptor expresses itself. Not like estrogen weakly. It's not a strong uh, binding, but it's enough to cause Especially problems. Especially volume. Right? So movement. women yeah. might go fly under the radar because they don't notice, right? Or they could have period issues or mood issues or nothing. Not see anything, but there's actually stuff happening behind the scenes. Mm. 
So you got to be careful. Hey, did you guys watch Love is Blind after I told no, you? No, no. So what's up with it's this? It's like my, my guilty Is it just no, terrible? I don't want to ruin it. So you guys want to go watch Love it is Blind? Yes, yeah, that's A stupid. new one? Yeah, it's like, dude, it's they so do. It's so dumb, bro. They do them all the time. It's the worst. It's, I've seen, yeah, the first season. Of yeah, it's my. They fall in love. So, like, so fake, right? It's, I, I Three mean. Three days. I think it's interesting. I think, I think, there, I think the idea of like having to like communicate for whatever amount of dates that they do it yeah. without like seeing each other. I find that experiment interesting, but, and then I always think it's so funny. Like when they, when they actually interact and then they, uh, they get together afterwards. And so there's a guy, I don't, I, I don't want to ruin it, but I feel like you're not going to watch it. So I'm going to share anyways. There's this guy who's got, he's down to like two girls and he's having such a hard time. And I think they're told, I think they're, I think they're told that, Hey, this experiment is supposed to be, completely blind and so i think they discourage the people from sharing anything physical because you ever notice that no one ever does that like you would think so there'd be some yeah. super superficial no, I don't person think they're allowed to yeah i don't think so either yeah. so i think they they like stay like really vague with that and you're not supposed to ask questions yeah. like how tall are you yeah. what's your skin color or what ethnicity i think i don't think if you want to step on a scale yeah exactly <laughs> what would the so i think they, they discourage that but this one guy was really <laughs> this guy came down to the last two people and this girl, so it was like the right before, like the like him having to like really decide. Now like, physically, were they comparable? No. Like, oh, this yeah, is dr like one of them was like like bad. She was like a dime, and then the other one was like mm, not oh, so no. much. Yeah, yeah, and the funny. So part, you're watching this? Yeah, like, yeah. So I'm watching it. Pick and the, door number two. And, the, and, and so <laughs> in like just natural conversation, they're talking about. I don't remember how it exactly came up, but someone made a comment like, "Oh, if, if, do you have a doppelganger? Or anybody says you look like someone?" And she goes, "She goes, oh yeah." And she, and he's like, "What? What? Who? Like?" And he's like, "Who? What?" Well, you know, some people say I look like Megan Fox. Now, was this the, oh, the not yeah. hot one? Yes, <laughs> the not hot one. <laughs> and you see the look on his face, like he yeah. gets all excited. And you're watching this, you're like, "Oh boy!" Oh, if man. he and he did, he picked her, and Dang. you're just like, and you know that played a role. He was so torn between these two girls. Oh. No, oh, that's it right there. That's the that's the chip. No, right you there. don't look like yeah. Megan Fox, yeah. bro. Yeah, yeah. She's not bad. Well, no, but I want to see the other one. Well, no, the other bad. one. The other, yeah. Show the show the. Can you see the one that he could have picked? Well, you're also okay. She's that's also like a pick. The yeah, angle not her one. entire physique either. Too. Oh. Yeah, so she's not nowhere near. Built I would like feel Megan so Fox. bad being on that show, and then you do the big reveal after you're like, yes, I picked this one, and then they see each other to not show on my face the, how I feel. You know what I mean? Like, ooh, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Oh, fuck. have they had one where they, they like oh, go yeah. to meet? And they're oh, like, yeah. You can tell. Like, that's like what my, Katrina and I's favorite thing to do in the show, face. right? It's like, yeah. this is our, like, you'll watch and be like, okay, what's the reaction? And like, oh, he's going to be pit. Like, and we, that was like the big joke between her. Like, oh, boy, is he going to be let down when he, <laughs> when she opens that door and doesn't see Megan Fox on the other side? Oh, Especially when the one, can you find me, Andrew, the one that he was, uh, like the, a terrible idea. the girl that he was supposed to, uh, that uh, was, do you a, know the name? I think it's, I think it was Rachel. I think it was Dude, the, that, those dating show. The worst one I saw. I, I want to know the ratings on those too, because you know that you see yeah. that they've now done Brazil and Africa oh, and like they're, they've they did spin off where they had them in basically like furrier uh, yeah. outfits and they sit there in these like costumes and try and get to know each other with these stupid like. Wasn't there one where they, they were all they all had Down syndrome and they were? Dating oh yeah, each yeah, other? that was that's, uh, that's the name Down that, for Love. Yeah, that's the name uh, of the show, bro. Yeah, yeah. Wait, why? Uh, yeah. Love on the Spectrum. That's why, another yeah. one with autism. Oh, I thought that was just, I thought that was a, yeah, Love on no, the Spectrum. Is, but I can't no, believe that they go there. There's one called Down with Love. Yeah. Down. Are you sure that? No, that's the name. Name of it because yeah, love on the love. spectrum is one that i've seen but I yes don't know. And it's endearing that. and it's like it's great but like yeah it was just like at what point do you feel like it's exploitive at all yeah. you know and it's like yeah. uh, i mean i so i think all of it's interesting to me because this is just this is welcome to the internet like this is what know. the internet has connected so many people and it's only a reflection of us i would like to see all it. of this stuff is, is a reflection we're of watching us. it yes i uh, that's the one down for love oh it, but it is Oh my god! I can't believe they named it. I'm sure that. it's like sweet and I, you know it like is endearing. There, I've actually, I think but I've still seen that the name though. Come on, guys! I I, I know, would like yes. to see one, yeah. and maybe this exists. I would like to see one. It's a arranged marriage uh, dating show where the parents meet and pick for each other. Well, they do the ones like uh, what's uh, yes, that's, that's her. her. That's the girl he passed on. <laughs> oh, oh, you messed up, dude. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, you fucked hey, up, but then brother. he's gonna meet her. Remember when they all I go to the pool party? That's why I asked because it's coming up like this week. Oh, yeah. No, so like, she's so. going to do the walk by just. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah. No, like, it's coming. Oh. So like, that's why I was asking because I know Sal just go watch it. And I was like, did you guys, have you guys watched the new one or what? Because there's we're looking be, for something to watch. Watch it. Because I think Wednesday, whenever, when does this drop? This drops Wednesday. 
Is this Wednesday? Oh, this episode? Yeah, yeah, yeah. This uh, Friday. Oh, okay. So it'll have dropped. So okay. I think this Wednesday is when they all, yeah. as right now, he has no idea. I mean, he has no idea. You need what. at least one trash TV show. I feel like everybody needs one. 100%. There's like, oh, my favorite one of all time was like Rock of Love with Brett Michaels. Oh, yes. Of course you like that. Dude, yes. <laughs> that show is ridiculous. Of course you like that. Yeah, one. it was amazing. Hey, I uh, before we sign off here, I wanted to bring up um, Legion's new sleep product. They changed their Lunar product. Oh. So they changed it and added a couple things. They added GABA, which have you guys ever used GABA before sleep? Yes. Yeah, okay. I mean. Very it, good. Oh, that, that get, puts me Well, out. it's in my, I, I believe that's in uh, Mellow. It, they might have GABA yeah, too. Yeah, it's theanine, GABA, and the so, magnesium. Yeah, so GABA is an inhibitory neurotransmitter. So it literally shuts and slows things down, relaxes the body. So they added that to it. And then what I like about it is. He they also put, have melatonin. He does, but he does, He puts the right amount of melatonin. You know, like every 0.5, melatonin product right? puts so much freaking melatonin in it that yeah. not good. It'll, it'll, it. Yeah, you'll get a negative feedback loop. Your body will stop making it. So This has 0. It, 0.5 milligrams, which is what you're supposed to do. Okay, so explain uh, to me, Not Sal, the three milligrams or five milligrams. Explain to me, because I've, I've heard like, uh, so would that be considered a micro dose of melatonin? That's considered the appropriate dose. If you look at the melatonin study. Well, I've also heard this though. I've also heard like if you are like jet lag really that's bad. That's different. You take a mega dose. Different. Okay, let's Very different. explain the difference here. Be because you're trying to reset your circadian rhythm. So you, you take a fat dose of melatonin. Okay. When you're supplementing your own melatonin at night, you don't want a big... In fact, if you take a big dose, what you'll find, a lot of people find this, either A, they wake up groggy, or they wake up in the middle of the night once the, the big dose of melatonin wears off. That's why I've never liked taking melatonin is because, I mean, it, it. I better not have anything to do in the morning. Yeah. That's how I feel. Yeah. Like if I if I have to fall asleep and then get up early yep. or have like yep. get up on a schedule, like it's not good. No, so he makes the so the and the one he made now with the lunar is chewable tablets that taste they taste really good. Doug is it actually, me or does it seem like the move is like the gummies chewable? Like are we all like a lot, yeah, a lot of supplement companies are moving that direction, it seems like I mean I love I I like it as a guy who doesn't like taking pills already. Yeah. Really? It's, oh yeah. It's the I love the gummies and the chewable. I think it stuff. helps with compliance. I, yeah. it probably, it, I would love to see a study on that. I bet it does. If of that's course for me, it does. If you like the taste dude, of swallowing pills every day, oh, it was brutal. I yeah. Remember, yeah, I was on that 20 <laughs> pill. I just I don't like it. I can't the, jump the in products that we, The products that we've had, the companies that, the companies that have yeah. made us chewable products now, which we've had Organifi's, Ned's, and now Legion's, uh, we crushed them, all of us. It's yeah. compliance, Doug's right. It is. I think you look forward to the taste of it, and so you're more likely to take it, you remember it, versus a pill, which is, doesn't taste like anything. Yeah. yeah. I have There's a, no I have, reward to it instead of just like, that. Ah. No. Yeah. So you think it's that it's more like I, I thought more of like a, if I had to go take a couple pills, it's like, oh, I, oh, I have to get a drink or a water with it, where mm -hmm. if it's a chewable, I just throw it in my mouth. Well, with. that's the other thing, too. It's probably yep. more convenient. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But anyway, good. it's a good product, so I can't wait to try it. Mike always has good products, yeah, too, good for stuff. sure. Oh, shout out. We got to shout out. Vicky, so... Every Monday here, we've been doing this. How long has Vicky been coming here? Oh, a long now. time now. A couple of years. A couple yeah. years. Two to three years. Yeah. So every Monday she comes here and she makes us look nice. She does the hair and the face. Yeah. The whole Imagine deal. how terrible we'd look if we didn't have her. Bad. Yeah. Yeah. Terrible. Yeah. So anyway, um, she has a barber like shop in, in Morgan Hill. If you got to see her. She's amazing. She's faded. also Faded Barbershop in, uh, so it's FadedBarbershop.com, but it's Faded Barbershop in Morgan Hill. Go in there. Is it faded.barbershop.mh okay. on yeah, Instagram? In Morgan Hill. Yeah. You know, by the way, too, she loves it when people say hi. Like we, there's actually a lot of people who have gone there because they've heard on the podcast and then they don't, like, people don't say anything. Yeah. And then they fi she finds out later no, down, say hi to down her. the road. Yeah, say Tell hi. You to, listen to the show. Yeah, say hi for sure. Element is an electrolyte powder that you put in your water. It's got no artificial sweeteners, no sugar, and it has the right amount of sodium to propel you through your workouts. This stuff is great. Most electrolyte powders don't have nearly enough sodium for hardworking athletes or fitness fanatics or people who don't eat a lot of heavily processed foods. Again, it's naturally flavored, no sugar, and it tastes amazing. Go check them out. Get yourself a free sample box by going through our link. Go to drinklmnt.com forward slash mind pump, and they'll give you a free sample pack with any order. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Bethany from Kentucky. Hi, Hi Bethany. Bethany. How can we help Hi. you? Hi. Good morning. How are you? Hey, guys. It's nice to see you guys. It's kind of exciting. You know, I hear everybody, they're all nervous and stuff. And, well, I, of course, got nervous. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. Doug's nervous, so, too. Yes. <clears throat> so, anyway, um, just a little bit about my background here is that I'm sitting around 140 pounds. I've uh, been working out for the last... 15 years or so, I uh, started with Beachbody, got it really into their programs, added some running. So I've done probably about six half marathons 
Uh, so I love, you know, doing some long distance running. Uh, I unfortunately had to stop that because I had some bad hip flexor and leg issues and just, I think, age in general. Um, so then Beachbody, I feel like, was really good because it got me to love working out. Um, I started doing a lot of cardio with that and then transitioned to more of the weights, weight slash cardio stuff uh, within the last year. I found another person, um, just an influencer. She uh, <clears throat> was married to one of the trainers that I followed on Beachbody, and she is all about women getting strong. That everybody, you know, everybody should lift. Uh, she preaches protein, you know, just right up your alley. Um, so I did see some changes with my body comp, um, but I've recently started gaining a little bit of weight in my midsection. Uh, I am 47, uh, full menopause. Uh, so I started taking some hormone replacements because that was just really throwing my body off. Uh, so I've been feeling a lot better with that. So within the last uh, couple weeks, I've really been focusing on protein intake. So I've been taking about or I've been eating consistently about 130 calories. You know, some days it might be Grammy. 120, 140, 50. Um, and then uh, so I've been lifting. Uh, I'm eating a, a now I'm eating about uh, 1,700 calories, but I mean, when I first started, it was probably about 1,200 calories and then 1,500, and then I've just sort of been, you know, listening to you guys increase my calories, um, and then uh, I've been taking creatine for the last couple months now. Um, so my goal is to get some rid of some of the fat uh, that I've, you know, gained a little bit. Uh, so I do work out around 5 o'clock in the morning. You know, I get myself ready, get my kids ready, go off to school, and then I don't eat until about 8 o'clock, so 8 a.m. So um, my questions are, is not eating before the workout causing me not to gain the muscle that I want? Um, I do drink some on the weekends, not excessively and not every weekend, but is that causing me to gain some weight? And then I've also been looking at some of your programs and which ones would you suggest? Um, since this question was put in, I uh, did buy the anabolic. I've been doing following that for the three days, and I am currently just started phase three. Awesome. Okay. Are you are you doing anything in addition to MAPS anabolic? Um, I've been trying to do some stretches. Uh, I've been trying to get my steps. Um, I've been, I'm probably about 8,000 a day, mm -hmm. um, okay. sometimes more. Um, but I've been, that's at least my goal. I'm trying to increase that slowly. So. Mostly walking. Are you walking? Is that how you're getting your steps? Yes. Good. Yeah. Okay. Yes. You're, you're, you're doing a lot. Yeah. You're doing a lot better. of the right stuff. Yeah. You, you really are. Um, with as far, uh, I'll, let me answer that question about the food part. Okay. okay. Usually it doesn't make a difference. Now, if you're noticing kind of a stress response, cortisol elevated, sometimes functional medicine practitioners will recommend that a person either have something right when they wake up, or in your case, you wake up so early, I do the same thing, I wake up at five, they would recommend having something small right after the workout just to, just to uh, you know, kind of get the cortisol to come down a little bit. But it's probably not making that big of a difference. Um, do you do you, now? You said you're on hormone therapy. How long have you been on that? Um, probably about six months now. Okay, and has that made a big difference? Are you progesterone, estrogen, or just progesterone? Both estrogen and progesterone. Um, I was getting hot flashes, yeah. brain fog, couldn't remember crap. I mean, it was terrible. Mm -hmm. um, so I started that hormone replacement, and that has just helped make me feel so much better normal anyway you you're doing a lot of the right stuff yeah, so much so that i'd actually be concerned about adjusting too much without actually getting like yeah. a body fat test yeah. i would love to because you, got, you got, keep in mind a couple things going on here right like uh you've re you've cut out all the running you used to do so now you've switched that with walking you're following a two to three day a week program you've increased calories um, also full blown menopause going on right now. So there's a lot of things that are going on and you're doing a lot of the right things. Yeah. You're doing what I would do with you. If Ex you were exactly. So what I would be worried about is to say, Oh, just because maybe you feel like you're carrying a little bit of extra body fat without knowing for sure what happened to the body fat, you know, say a month ago to mm -hmm. compare today, um, you might be right on the right track. So that would be really helpful and you, useful. You know, get. it'll help actually, Bethany. Um, <clears throat> let's see over uh, when were you at 1200 calories? How long ago? Probably, last, probably this time last year. 
So it's been about a year of slowly bumping up to about 1,700 and then increasing protein? Yes. Okay. Um, how do you feel now in comparison to before? Forget the, the body fat and all that stuff. Like Workout-wise. Mm -hmm. like, like is How much has your strength gone up? Do you feel more energy? Is, is your sleep better? Like, Are all those signs pointing in one direction or another? Yes, I have been. I mean, I sleep. I sleep well. Um, while I was well, before the hormone therapy, I was waking up okay. all, a lot at night, um, so that's really helped a lot. I think the food increase has helped quite a bit. Um, when I was at the twelve hundred calories, I was eating quite uh, quite a bit. It's probably the same amount of protein, but I was just the calories were just so low. Yeah. Um, you know, real low fat um, chicken breast and ground turkey and that kind of stuff. So. Um, I've switched, uh, some of that up and, you know, I'm close to a hundred or 1700 calories now and really haven't gained any weight. Um, yeah, I but I do did. feel a lot better. Oh, I, you're, I, yeah. I think you're, you're crushing. Right, right. It out. So what yeah. I would love to do, Bethany, for you, since you're at the phase three of anabolic is mm -hmm. give you another program to, uh, after, after this finishes that you can follow. What I would love is a body fat test now and another one in four weeks. Like that okay. would be that would and I would I would still want you to continue to slowly bump your calories. Yeah, I think I wouldn't want to change. I don't want to change anything until I have that last number because everything you're saying is is telling me that you're actually doing really good. Yeah. You're you're moving in the you're right direction. Right yeah, yeah, you're doing great. And you you said your body weight's 140. How tall are you? Uh, five three. And your how's your strength uh, with maps anabolic? Do, you, do you, what, what were you working out with with like like your squats and deadlifts and let's say phase one? Um. Well, I was doing. Squats probably, which I, I'm real cautious about that because I've sure. got I've had some lower back pain. Um, so um, I have one of those like old style powerhouse um, like rack things at home. Yeah. Um, so putting, I, I think I was up to about 80 pounds on the squats, and then deadlift I was probably about 95, I okay. think. So okay, and, um, and you're feeling stronger. You're you're seeing your strength go up. I am. Slowly, oh. but yeah, you're I mean, doing. But I've also been lifting for probably year, year and a half. Yeah, but you're, do, you're doing good. Yeah. I, and I would slowly, slowly <laughs> increase your calories. Let's get you to you know over two twenty two, twenty three hundred calories. Doing what you're doing now, and then from there okay. you have a lot of flexibility. Yeah, let let let's set let us set you up with a program. Let's go get a body fat test as soon as we we can right now, like in the next week or so, and then again mm -hmm. in four in four weeks. Also, we'll have Doug put you in the private forum. And then you can give okay. us uh, an update in four weeks, because I, okay. I I think we are. I, see, sounds like we're all on the same page here. Of like, I think everybody's like fearful to change anything because yeah. I think what you're doing is actually really good. I just think okay. we need to get a little bit more data on exactly what's happening because you might just be. And this is always hard, by the way, for clients. You've probably heard me or us talk about this on the podcast. Is you're like in that Goldilocks zone yeah. where you're really not moving a lot in any direction. Your body weight's kind of staying the same, but you're gradually getting stronger. So you're gradually building a little bit of muscle. You're also slowly losing a body fat. So you're not seeing major changes, but actually a lot is happening in the positive direction. And so I don't think any of us want to overcorrect you until we get a little bit more information. Well, just to give you an idea, uh, Beth, when you were eating 1200 calories, were you running and doing like more workouts and stuff at that time? So yeah. consider this, you were working out a lot more before trying to burn a ton of calories and eating 500 less calories a day. Right. Today you're eating 500 more calories, working out less and you feel better. You are, mm -hmm. you're doing phenomenal. Yeah. You're doing really, really okay. well. Like yeah, if you were my client, I'd be super like excited about this and yeah. really you, you just stay the course and you're going to continue to see yourself feel better and change in a very sustainable way. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, you guys talk all the time about um, just increasing those calories so that you can have a day every once in a while yeah, to right. enjoy. Because um, before I wasn't, I wasn't getting that. Yeah. Were you bumping your, did you bump your fats uh, with, uh, with your new, with your new calories? Because. Yes. Good. Yeah. When mm -hmm. women eat low fat, it, it wrecks their, mm -hmm. just, just overall how they feel. And it's one of the first things I would do with a client. I'd look at their diet, their fat <laughs> intake was low. I'd bump their fat intake and it would change things. So you guys think 40 plus maybe? I was just going to ask you, what do you think should we do for the next- so a fo As a follow-up? Because she's kind of already doing that, but the, the, the lifestyle guides- like, I like the 40 plus. We'll, we'll yeah, that's a great program. Define it a bit further. Either that or symmetry. I thought yeah, symmetry, symmetry too. I didn't want to send her back on the isometrics right now. I, I wanted to kind of keep her ramping up. I think so 40 plus. I, I like 40 plus and then the form. 
Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna send you a program. We'll put you in the forum, and then let us know. Yeah, like follow up with us, Beth. Love to hear okay. about how yeah. things are going. Yes. Okay. Great. All right. Awesome Thank you work. Guys. Yeah, Thank nice you. Job. Great job. Right. Really appreciate it. Yep. You Thank it. you for everything you do. Thank you. That's S good. Such a great example of. Um, yeah. You know, someone who's doing a really good job, but can, how we they get question our, how how we can get in our head. Yeah. yeah, you know, and what it is is that you just you don't see that scale moving. Maybe you don't even feel like you see your body changing much in the mirror. But the, what she's saying, just like you pointed out, eating five hundred more calories, not moving running anymore, less. moving moving yeah. less, having the ability she's to have flexible strides. weekends and yeah. have drinks on the weekend, mm -hmm. and not feel like any yeah. anything's getting stuck. I mean. Doing really, really good. You know, it's funny is I would have clients like this and they, you know, get in their own head and then they come to me at some point and say, I just ran into somebody I haven't seen in six months. And, and they, they asked me, them. yeah, they said, wow, you lost 15 pounds. And it's like, the scale hasn't moved. I'm like, well, I'm telling you, yep. body composition's changed. That, that makes such a difference that I actually used to, that was part of the advice, right? So if I had someone like her and she hears this, go do this, go find somebody who hasn't seen you in the last year. And see what they say, yeah. like, mm -hmm. and just go old family, old friend, yep. somebody who hasn't seen you in like a year, and tell me that they don't make a comment on yeah, how it's good, good you reassurance. Yes, because sure. why are people saying I lost weight? You yeah, know? yeah, or just that you look great. Yep, you know yep. what I'm saying? It's like you just sometimes need to hear that from somebody I like else. Your girl you're... voice that you do sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> it's my favorite. It's great. Our next caller is Marshall from Florida. Marshall, what's up, man? How can we help you? What's up, buddy? What's up, boys? Good morning. Yeah, well, happy Ash Wednesday, by the way. Uh, thanks, buddy. You too. Yeah, thank you. What's going on? How can we help you? Uh, so, my question was, back in November, I wrote you guys. Um, I had started doing a different programming. It was full body, two days a week. Um, more of like a powerlifting um, workout. and. I was noticing that uh, I was getting really sore after my squat days, more so than like running a MAPS pro program. So really what I'm wondering is, is it due to maybe a over intensity or could it be more of a recovery uh, problem that I'm having? Uh, I mean, it's both, both, I guess the same thing. Um, intensity is usually the first place we would look if mm -hmm. this was the case volume being this kind of second thing, what's different. What is different about the workout now when you squat? Yeah. Are you doing more? What's sets? the sets and reps look like? Are you trained you? to yeah. failure? Like what's the difference in the load? So on that program, <clears throat> I, it was more like a traditional five by five. Um, it, I was starting out at, 60% of my max, like in week one. Um, and then it progressed each workout, right? Um, each workout, it would go up 5%. The only difference being on that fifth set, it was, it was like a, a burnout set to that. That was more of the gauge to, um, see my progress from week to week. And that's the one so, that made you really sore, Marshall? Yeah, Marshall, are, yeah. are you not, you're obviously not running one of our programs, yeah? It doesn't sound familiar. So now I am. I've ran y'all's <laughs> programs in the past. I have RGB. Um, I, I did that because, well, for one, I've, I've never ran a, a any kind of powerlifting or real, like a strength You wanted pace. You wanted to see if the grass was greener on the other side? Pretty much. Yeah. How'd that go, how'd that go for you? Tank. How'd that go for you? Yeah. So the soreness is not fun. Um, <laughs> it's fake grass. I'm, yeah, yeah. So I'm back yeah. on, I'm back on anabolic tank now. Grass. Good. And I will say, um, whenever I miss a workout or two, uh, due to life circumstances, you know, when I do come back and, and, uh, get back to it, I'll still see that soreness even when I just miss a workout or two. So that's normal. That's, that's normal. Yeah. This is why you've, and I've talked about this on the podcast many times, like it's still to this day. Uh, in fact, we brought it up just the other day again. Uh, when I miss a, a couple days or a week off of training and I come back, I always overestimate what I need to do intensity wise. And it's always blows my yeah. mind. Like I, after the workout, even with all my experience, I go, Jesus, I could have, could have just done two sets and walked away and been plenty yeah. good, but I do more because I think I'm fine. 
and that's a lesson that you're going to continue to learn until you understand that when you when you have a few days off like that again it doesn't take much to send that signal again so you just got to do you do half the volume or half the intensity and because you can always ramp it up the following week and so you're just you're overreaching every time you you get back to your lift and you, and you don't need to yeah either that or deal with the soreness i mean uh it, that's but that's normal you take some time off the soreness is worse when you come back, even if it's just a week or, or a few days. That's that's totally normal. Now, if it persists, so that is normal. Yeah, it's totally normal. Mm -hmm. If it persists, uh, then you then we we got to look at your programming. It is it is normal, but I also want to point out it's also a, a indicator that you did more than you need to. And so, in just Sal, what Sal's saying is, yeah, you just it's normal. It happens to everybody. We yeah, can you work still, through. You still it. want to cut down? You're, yeah, nothing. But I mean, that should always be this reminder to you. And I and the reason why I share that on the podcast that like with all of our knowledge and experience, I still do that shit to myself. So that's how normal it is. But it doesn't okay. mean it's right, right? So like, yeah. so the the, the self talk I have when afterwards is, God damn it, yeah, I should know better. I didn't need to do that, right? But it, it's not. I like guess a, um. If sorry to interrupt, but I guess um a question that kind of naturally leads out of that to your point is, you know, and you guys have talked about it's also normal for you know life just to happen mm -hmm. and yeah. you might miss a week. Yeah. So at, it's almost as if inconsistency is the norm. Yes. Uh to an extent. Um, so how am I supposed to expect to make gains if inconsistency is the norm. Listen, we did, we, we shared us. You ever hear us talk about the study where the, the two groups, you had somebody who uh, they went for like 18 weeks. They trained every single week for 18 weeks. Mm -hmm. And there was another group that every, every fourth week, they took that entire week off. And at the end of that study, the people that took the week off every fourth week, got the same results as the group that went every single week all the way through 18 weeks. Yeah. So the the slight interruptions here and there are are not that as big of a deal as people you make can, it. Now, you, you breaks for, you know, months. weeks. Yeah, weeks straight, three can, weeks in a row. You can also do this, Marshall. It's like, oh, man, I can't go do my normal workout. All I have is 15 minutes. Okay. Yeah. Do a 15-minute workout or a 10-minute something, right? Or Yeah, I ended up doing that last night. Um, That's it. I had a long day yesterday got back home we actually just bought a nice little uh workout rack with all the essentials of about a week ago so last night it was late i didn't get to the gym but i worked out at home and did just the foundational lifts and that was it it's great yeah you um, got it. Okay. something's better than nothing right so, do you, do you oh, have yeah. maps 15 because that program is just incredible for stuff like this yeah i do and um i put my wife on that actually yeah. because she's uh postpartum right now so i thought that'd be, good, be good for her be good for you too. do the advanced yeah. version yeah. watch what happens yeah yeah i think too like um in terms of like when you go back to to lifting to adam's point like the, the mentality of of uh tapering that down and like really just being disciplined with doing less than what you think um, you, you want to, to to really jump back in full force like you were doing. You need to be able to taper that down so you can build upon that again. It doesn't matter if it feels like it's like you're you're backtracking. You're not actually backtracking because now you're you're giving yourself the right stimulus. So it's all about the right dose in order to kind of keep pushing you forward. So you know if you if you hammer yourself too hard, you're going to have this excess amount of time to recover and and the the soreness itself. Um, you know, we can address that, but you know, to find that sweet spot, you're always trying to find that sweet spot, that right dose for you. Uh, so that way, you know, frequency is going to be more likely, uh, because you know, these interruptions are going to happen. Yes. But, um, if you're not getting in the way of that with restricting your movement because of soreness with, you know, all these kind mm -hmm. of patterns, like you're going to feel more energized. And this is like a snowball effect that you can build off of. So it's, it's a totally different min like mindset, but you got to start training yourself mentally to do that. Yeah. It's definitely a hard, uh, mindset to adopt after you know, being raised up to think like soreness is the, the, yeah. the pinnacle, defining right? factor. Yeah. Totally. I yeah. know that now it's, that's not, but even still just to come into the workout and, you know, kind of just remind myself like, Hey, you missed a week. 
So we need to dial it down. That's and it. even during the workout, it doesn't feel like I'm doing a lot right. already mm -hmm. just to that point. So 100%. Um, you, you don't lose strength in a week, but you do cause more damage on the comeback workout. Well, especially so. right. where, where it becomes super detrimental is when you have that hard workout and then you don't want to lift the next day because you're so sore. Like, so th that's kind of how I try and get myself in the right mindset is like, yeah. uh, so what is your next day gonna I lifted like? yesterday and I hadn't lifted it almost a week. Right. So yesterday's workout as I'm training, the things I'm thinking is like, I want to lift today. Right. So I'm the, the tomorrow is what I'm thinking yesterday. And so as I'm going through these lifts, I'm going like, I don't want to go too much. Cause then if I go really bad, I'm going to not want to lift tomorrow. And I care about the consistency of getting back into it. Right. So that's kind of what you're, you're telling yourself as you're going through it and you think, Oh, I could easily do another set or I could easily add more weight. It's like, yeah, but I don't need to, and I'm going to lift tomorrow and I don't want to be so damn sore that I don't want to lift tomorrow. So I need to back off and you can always add later on. Like, so but you know how, you know, the thing we always say, right. Do as little as possible to elicit the most amount of change. So that's the mindset. Mm -hmm. All right, man. Good stuff. Thanks, All right, Marshall. Thanks for calling in, bro. Yeah. yeah. Thanks so much, guys. Thanks for your time. Yep. You got it. All right, dude. Soreness is definitely a sign <clears throat> that you don't want to ignore. The The problem is that soreness, uh, that people think that soreness is a sign of a good workout. Yeah, right. They're misreading the sign. It is not a sign of a good workout. That's still it's still a, a big a big thing. It's you know, a sign a that you might have, have done that. too much. Yeah, well, and it, and it we're really... The, and he didn't get into it. I, I, I alluded to it, but he didn't get into it. But what happens a lot of times with these people is they go off for a week. And by people, I mean all of us, right? So you go off for like a week and then you come back and you're like, oh, I've been off for a you week. You got to make up for it. You got to make up for yeah, it. Yeah. And they get after it. And then because you got after it so much, either one, you don't even lift the next day or the two days after like that. Or even if you do lift, you're going to have to like gingerly go through it because you're so sore from the previous workout. So you end up doing, you end up doing half the volume that you could take and then the body's still sore. So it's, it's just trying to recover. Like, so That's it. Yeah, you don't realize how much you shoot yourself in the foot by overreaching that much consistently. And, you know, again, we I know people are tired of hearing the do as little as possible to listen amount of change. But that's the reason why I say it so much is because I get what a challenge this is. I'm getting yeah. that tattooed on my butt. I Good came idea. up with that. Our next caller is Sean from Colorado. Sean, what's up, man? What's up, Sean? No, not a whole lot. How are y'all doing? Good. 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 Yeah. How can we help you, bro? Uh, okay, so I'm a stay-at-home dad. And I've recently lost about 50, 58 pounds. Wow. Sweet. For, it took about a year. All I did was change my diet and walk. Oh, yeah. Okay. Now I'm at a point where I need to start lifting. And I don't know where to go. I've been out of the game so long that I'm just like in there. I go do your basic pig movements, just move weight, and then hope for the best. Uh, we so got you. A, yeah, we're, you're oh, gonna be yeah. you're, you're gonna be someone fun to help out, bro. I we got know, you, dude. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What is your schedule? <laughs> Newbie gains. Yeah, we got you. Maps anabolic. Starting pre phase. That's it. Done. You're gonna okay. love it. Do, do you have can a barbell? Do you have a like a barbell and a bench and all that stuff? Can I throw a little challenge in there for y'all? <laughs> yeah, I love <laughs> challenges. Yeah, Give it to me. Uh, as a stay at home dad, we actually travel. Um, my wife is a doctor of physical therapy. But she deals mostly with like spinal and that kind of stuff. And so we're on the road. We're never in one location for more than three months. And so like a gym membership is really hard to keep in, keep going, even with Planet Fitness. They're super easy to go to, but they're also not always like right on spot. So it's because we choose places that aren't necessarily main hubs, I guess. So it's mostly home workouts. <laughs> Yeah. Do, you, do you, what equipment do you have at home? Yeah. What do you got? I've got resistance bands, jump ropes. Uh, let's see. Some places I can put up a pull up bar. I need to get one that's for like the doorway, but even like here, we're in like a, over a hundred year old house. The doorways are huge. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's like not simple. Okay. So, I mean, I'm like very limited. Are you, are you open to, because we can we can work with this. Yeah, but we can totally work with it. I would love I would love if you invested in a adjustable dumbbell, like literally the dumbbells that you can adjust all the way up to like eighty pounds, or or a suspension a trainer. That, that would be or that. Easier. That's it. I mean, that would be even cheaper and easier, right? Suspension trainer is less than a hundred bucks. We can get that. I don't know what those dumbbells run for for a, a pair of those, but that would be awesome because we can get. A I lot think I've seen them online for like 100, 150 bucks. Yeah. That stuff's not too bad. I could probably work with something like that. 
If you if you can okay, so if you have a bench and dumbbells, then we can do maps anabolic. If you if you want to use a suspension trainer, which is even more convenient, and you could t you could travel with that. We have a program called Map Suspension, and with you don't need you could just use your suspension trainer and body weight and some some dumbbells in your set. Okay, so I mean honestly, like with you guys, where would you go? Like as a as a person who's trying to become like a hybrid athlete, so I want to be able to run marathons, but I also want to be able to push some weight. Let's worry about the marathon running after we build yeah. some muscle right yeah. now. Yeah, let's, let's focus build. On let's build because here's what you did really. You did really well. Was you you slowly reduced the the body fat over a year. You didn't crash diet. You just cleaned. It nope. sounds like you cleaned everything up. You just made more more activity. So you did a really good job of of shredding the body fat. Now what I'd want to do with you is build a roaring metabolism and and build a nice base. Mm -hmm. So I'd want okay. to re reverse diet you. So I actually would want you to start lifting with either MAP suspension okay. or MAPS anabolic, whatever we decide, and focus okay. on building muscle right now and building your metabolism. So the goal would be to, because I see your current calories are only at 2,000 calories. It yeah, they're super low. Um, I don't feel like I'm active enough. So, get it. To you did a good job. More. You're good. You're, I, my point, though, is that <laughs> what I don't want to do is introduce running to you right now at that low of calories, because then you're going to shoot yourself in the foot. So what we want okay. to do is we want to reverse diet and so slowly increase calories, train either suspension okay. or anabolic, whichever one we decide to give you, follow that. And the goal would really get your, be to get yourself up to where you're eating more like 2,800 to 3,000 calories and maintaining your body fat percentage or looking better because you've built muscle mm -hmm. before we even uh, cons I mean consider uh, putting in any sort of running. Yeah, and then I'd I'd have them do probably okay. Symmetry, yeah, and the running I just do like whenever I feel like it. So it's not necessarily like a thing I train for. I just I enjoy running. So when I feel like running, I go run. Right. So I'll, I'll build. I would build that in for you. But right now, I wouldn't want you to do that. Right now, yeah. it's not helping us towards our goal of like building your metabolism, building a, a it'll, muscle. It'll counter it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's so it's, okay. it's as of right now, it's worthless. We'll get to that. Right now, it's slowly increase the calories. If we're going to go with MAPS uh, suspension, we'll send you sus MAPS suspension over to you, and we'll follow okay. that as we we, re we reverse diet you out. And that'll be a okay. really good place, considering you haven't been lifting any weights. Yeah, you'll get benefits. MAPS suspension would be a great place. It, it'd be the, the easiest one to get going, and it won't be interrupted by travel or places where you don't have access to anything like that. And then after that, if you want to start to ramp it up, then maybe we invest in the dumbbells and we do MAPS anabolic. Okay. Yeah. No, that sounds way more into like into like our lifestyle. Cool. Mm -hmm. And I love. I actually like the idea that because if you're talking about ath ath athletic abilities and so that map suspension is is an even better kind exactly. of foundation. Yeah. So that's going to be even better for you. I think you. you'd like that a lot, and yeah. it's it really does build good muscle. It'll strengthen a lot of like deep range okay. of motion. Too. And then I believe in my original question, I did state that I'm a little nervous about putting on too much weight. So with reverse dieting. What things do I need to watch out for? You getting in so your I'll own head. So I'll just follow like what you guys say. Like that doesn't bother me at all. But no, I need no. to know like what to look out for. Let, no, let, no, no. Let, listen. Let, this here's what a reverse diet is not eating everything. <laughs> a reverse diet right. is a very structured it's a bulk. It's a very structured, um, disciplined way of slowly increasing calories. So you know, a guy like you, if you're eating two thousand calories a day, which is what you wrote up here, I'd go up to like twenty two hundred calories. I'd stay there for a little okay. while. Then maybe go up another hundred calories. You're just you're just slowly increasing it, and then staying with the increase for for a few weeks, just to see how you feel. What you want to see is strength increases. You want to see not really that much change on the weight on the scale, but a body composition okay. change. Right, like you start to get leaner, you start to build more muscle. So your body weight really isn't changing much. Maybe goes up a little bit, but not much at all. We'll do this too, Sean. I'll have yeah, that's. I'll have Doug put you in the private forum. That way, as you're going through this process, you can just check in with us. Okay. So, oh, that's make, that's fantastic. Make, yeah. Cause I do feel like I'm getting weaker as I'm going, which is strange because I don't feel like I'm doing anything different except for those calories. Yeah. Well, that's what's happening. That's okay, though. That's, you, <laughs> you, you, you did a really good job at this point. And you, you've, you've set the, the, you laid the foundation for yep. us to really help you out and build muscle. So, literally, we're going to do MAP suspension. Doug's going to send that over to you. The only invest investment you'll have to do is buying the suspension trainer, which, by the way, I think Doug can send you a link for 50% off of that also. Doug, do, you, do we have that? We do, oh. yes. Yeah, so that'll save you also 50 bucks. So the thing's going to be like 50 bucks. Oh. So that's like, so. I think that's amazing. So you'll get that. 
you'll follow the suspension. We're going to put you in the forum. And then all I want you to do is once a month, beginning of the month, so four weeks from now, just check in with us. Let us know where you're at, how you're feeling, what you're, and you know, whatever things you're concerned about or not concerned about, just check in with us. And then we can make adjustments on a, on a monthly basis. Oh, that'd be fantastic. You guys, like just listening to your guys' podcast has changed how I eat, how I look at things. I don't do things quickly, obviously. Um, and I just, I take it like one step at a time until I get it perfect. Right on, dude. That's the way to do it, man. Yeah, you're doing good. Thanks, yep. bro. Yeah. Appreciate we got, it. We got you. Yeah, no, thank you guys so much. You All got right. it, Sean. All right, Sean. Right, see you in the forum. Take it easy. He is relaxed for being a stay at home. Dad. Yeah, he he's is. got little kids in the background. He's probably had to figure that out. Like, I that's mean, gotta be chill. When it's just me and my kids, I'm like, I can't even sit down. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> even when they take a nap, I'm standing. Yeah, he's done a good job. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I this is a, the only different thing I would have done is instead of lost losing the weight with just walking, would have oh, been some strength weights. Yeah. Of course, yeah. of course. But I mean, it, it, we're fine. Like he didn't go ridiculous no. with the cutting. He didn't go crazy cardio. He just and people need to know. Like he's talking about, you know, building strength. Like suspension trainers, uh, of, is, of all of the non, you know, free weight tools they can you can use besides like gym machines and stuff. Like they are phenomenal oh, muscle yeah. builders. Yeah, you could go from beginner to super advanced with one pair of suspension. He, trainers. You know, too. This is actually really. This will be a fun test for him if he if he's the type of person that will follow through. Is following suspension, he's going to build a bunch of muscle, and then if you were going to make the investment into dumbbells yep, or that, yep. like that'll be the not a beautiful totally. progression from that. Totally. Our next caller is Casey from Italy. Casey, how you doing? Yeah, hey guys. Oh my gosh, it's so awesome. Uh, now I know why everybody gets so nervous when they're on here. <laughs> oh gosh. Thank you in advance. Uh so much to say, but to the all of you, Sal, Adam, Justin, Doug, that your show is absolutely amazing. I've been a listener for years, but thank you for being such good men and standing up for what you believe in and bringing goodness into this world. You guys, you guys are all angels in my eyes. So thank you so much. Just want to say thank you. Uh, uh, Grazie uh, mille. Grazie mille. Thank you, you give so this much. woman something for free. Come yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, we got you. We'll, we'll take we'll care of you. It out. Yeah, we'll, yeah. You're not leaving without something. By the way, you're in Sicily right now, right? What part of Sicily are you in? In your homeland. So I'm, uh, the closest city is in Catania. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So you're a little bit, a little, a little higher. So my family's by, by Palermo, but I've been to Catania. So cool. Okay. Yeah. I think my family, my great grandparents are here, my Bisnoni, I think they're from Palermo. I still have to do some research and figure all that out. But yeah, well, great. living so, here now and loving it. So how can we help you? So um, my question is, so I'm a retired bodybuilder. I did the bikini bodybuilding three shows. Um, my last show is in 22. Mm -hmm. Gosh, it's 24 already in, tw in 22. Uh, and I, I work alongside the military and support services. And they have this really cool thing called the 500 pound thousand pound club mm. uh, and if you haven't heard of it it's total one rep max of bench squat and deadlift so i'm going for the 500 pound club in may i turned 40 i'm doing it on my 40th birthday my question is what program should i follow next to achieve my goal right now i'm in anabolic advanced phase three i'm about to end it so this is perfect timing mass, mass power lift, mass power lift. For easy sure. yeah. that's easy yeah. mass power lift is the way to go okay Super sure. Okay, yeah. that was too easy. Oh, yeah. super then, easy. Yeah. And, and it, yeah, that was an easy question. Okay, do, I do it. I'm power. I'm pretty excited. Do it in a, a, a calorie surplus if you can. So uh, that would be my suggestion. That, that, is, yeah. That'll be too easy. I'm eating pasta five days a week now. I'm still hitting my protein goal. <laughs> yeah, and you you um, look you look really lean too. So you, a surplus is going to be great with power lift. Awesome, awesome. And then for dead bed, uh, any best tips for perfecting deadlift form because I'm, I think I'm slacking in my deadlift. Okay. What's, what, what, how do you pull? Uh, you, you sumo conventional. Are you tall, short? She's five. Eight, I'm, tall. I'm tall. I'm five, eight. Um, so I go all the way down, I guess that's, and I pulled the bar, not, not in reverse like that. And I push up. So you, you pull conventional. Mm -hmm. Conventional. Yes. Okay. So yeah, you know, sumo, sumo is like a sumo squat. Yeah, not sumo. Yeah, so you're, you're pulling conventional. Yeah, typically if you're uh, if for a girl over five five, then you'll pull conventional. Um, so pulling conventional, you want to drive through the floor with your feet, and you want to really, you really want to grip the bar tight, activate your lats before you pull up. So you want to activate your lats, take any slack off the bar. So you're kind of pulling up a little bit on the bar. 
squeeze the bar tight, extend your arms fully, no bend in the elbows whatsoever, mm -hmm. and then drive through the okay. floor with your feet like you're pushing the floor away from you. And that typically gets people in a better position. I got uh, uh, one step better for you there, Casey. Is we're going to put you in the forum, and then if you video you deadlifting, then the guys will really be yeah. able to give you some good And you advice, know, MAPS so. Powerlift, because it's a powerlifting program, there it's really, really good instruction on how to do the big lifts. Yeah. So you'll, you'll, you'll watch the videos, and you'll get some good instruction okay. on that. Yeah. That's kind awesome. of been Pollock Thank and his you. coaching Looking stuff forward too, right? to it. Yep. Yeah, I can't and wait to hear. Thank you so much for the form. I'm yeah. excited to be in there and and yeah, we're yeah, gonna, to, when, to, when you, to, to, the next time you go to the gym and you do deadlifts, just give us a, a video. So, and that's actually one of the ways that people use the forum the most is to actually critique forum, since obviously, like it's tough to give you advice on deadlifting without seeing where you may or may yeah. not be having a mistake. So there might be some little things that we can cue you that will make all the difference to get much stronger. And that that lift is like that, where like somebody's lifting and they just have slack in their arms, simply taking the slack out of their arms of the bar and also yep. they can lift uh, 30. Another set of eyes are very helpful. Yes. Totally. Yes. Awesome. Thank you, yeah. guys. Okay, so BAPS power lift in the forum and I'll work on the deadlift. Real quick, uh, Adam, you talked about there's nowhere else you can go. I think it was Truckee to the mountains, the beach. Here in Catania, we have Mount Etna, 40 minutes up. I was at the snow a couple of weeks ago. It came down, and you're at the beach. So, oh, wow. um, come so on. Can Listen, you. you can't compare. Sicily's a, it's an island in the Mediterranean. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> come on. He said no other place on the earth. Is, yeah, but is, there, is there actually like a, a hill you can ride down on the snow, or is it just you're saying there's snow on the ground? No, you can ski up there. I oh. haven't skied up there. You can go up there and oh, go wow. skiing. People the, do. Yeah. The, the only problem is in Sicily, when you're trying to get any service anywhere at a certain time of day, everybody's asleep or not working or whatever. You're like, what the hell's going on here? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know what that I mean? That is absolutely 100% true. Yeah. And well, they eat dinner very late, and I cannot um, yeah. adapt to eating dinner at 10 o'clock at night. Hey, <laughs> listen, are you eating yeah. arancini there for your, for your surplus? Because that's one of the best bulking foods. Of course. Arancini, yes, yes, all the time. Mm, Arancini, excellent. pasta alla norma. Gosh, I'm just eating everything under the sun. And, <laughs> uh, and, it, and you know what? The quality of food, oh, it's, it's just so much different and better here. And the, you, you you can't compare. Yeah, yeah, I know. It makes me sad. Just awesome. make sure you hit that yeah. protein intake first. You're all good. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yes. For calling in. Thank you guys so much. Have a wonderful day. Ciao. You got it. Care, Happy yeah. Valentine's Day. Yes. Bye. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. All right. Why are we all loud? Why are we all loud? Italian people. Uh, it's just, just yell. Is, yeah. We just yell. <laughs> Every excited. one of my friends grew up too. We're just excited too. people. Yeah. You know what I mean? yeah. Yeah. I yeah. love eight. Hey, she's going to crush. If she's got a bodybuilding background, bikini, she totally. looked lean. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and she's going to follow power lift. Oh my God. She's going to, she's going to hit that, that number, those numbers. No problem. Yeah. I agree. You know, it'll be a good time. It'll be fun. Look, if you like the show, head over to mindpumpfree.com and check out some of our free fitness guides. We have guides that can help you with almost any health or fitness goal. You can also find us all on Instagram. Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump DeStefano, and Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. 